It is now four o'clock and I will call this City of Lacey Lodging Tax Advisory Committee meeting to order on September 21st, 2021. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, <clears throat> can I get a, a motion to approve the minutes from our previous meeting, please? So moved. Carried. It is moved and seconded. Um, is there any discussion? That motion carries. Our next agenda item is our 2022 Lodging Tax Fund application presentations. And uh, we have uh, six presentations today. Uh, each program uh, will provide a five minute presentation addressing questions raised by the committee with five minutes of follow up questions from the committee. Uh, before we get started, uh, City Manager, would you like to add anything? Oh, thank you. Great. We have the six presentations and they're ready to provide more insight at uh, LTAC's wish. Excellent. Uh, it looks like first we have uh, Sue Balash, if I'm saying that right, who is the recreation manager for the city of Lacey Regional Athletic Complex. Complex. Uh, is Sue available? I'm going to let her in right now. Um, Nicole, can you let Julie McFadden in as well for the question and answer part? Yes, I am doing that right now. Hi, Sue. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for having us. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to answer all your questions. I'm going to share my screen real quick, and I also had invited Julie McFadden along. So if there's any more further questions, because it is on the maintenance and operation she might be able to get a, you a more thorough hands-on explanation of why um, we're looking for additional costs for the maintenance and operations. So let me share our screen real quick. Okay, and please keep your presentation to about five minutes. Not a problem, I appreciate that reminder, thank you. Um, part of, for the Regional Athletic Complex, though we did have COVID, which did have an enormous impact on us. The complex still had to be maintained, whether or not we had people in the complex or not. We still had stuff going on. We had league and tournament play, but still brought in over 40,000 people with an estimated economic impact of about $813,000. Um, but part of the maintenance operation uh, issue was not only counting the cost of living there was an increase with the seasonal wages, which is our hands-on. She has seven to nine seasonals throughout the year and their wages were increased a dollar per hour for last year. That amount alone added up to $7,000. Water costs in just last year, and we have not had an increase in the last five years. And so last year alone, water increased 3%, along with having drier, hotter summers and pretty much drought conditions along with everything else that's happened with COVID, the cost of our materials have increased, fertilizer, irrigation supplies, restroom supplies, everything that we need to maintain a top-notch complex is going up. What also happens is as facilities age, it costs more money to maintain it, to keep it up at the level that we're wanting it to be so we can continue to bring in the successful tournaments and the people into our community. Part of that is one was the concessions needed to be updated with current codes, um, tree root issues and play equipment. I'm just gonna show you a couple examples of the playing, um, the playground equipment issue. They are aging and have had to be repairs. That was one of the slides that had to be repaired. This is one of the other toys that they walked on. It was, had to be replaced or fixed because it was folding on to people. Um, as the trees have grown and matured, we're having issues with the tree roots breaking our irrigation. That's adding up um, a considerable amount of money through the course of time. And one of the other main big issues we had this year was in the softball complex, we had a mainline break that had to be fixed. And our maintenance staff, Julian hers included, took it upon themselves to figure out how to make the um, concrete 
for themselves to actually save money, but it still costs money. So they were able to fix that on, on their own. So that's in a large part of why we are looking for $20,000 more in maintenance and operation. It's the fact that er everything is continuing to go up. And though we can continue to raise our prices, we can only absorb so much of that money. And $20,000 <clears> increase over the last five years, I don't feel is a, is a huge increase considering we are a year round complex. There are tournaments in a normal time that are going 52 weekends of the year in the softball, the soccer complex is going, plus it's a community park that's there for everybody in the community and those that are coming in for tournaments, et cetera, to use and enjoy. Um, the second question you had was the RAC's relationship with Olympia and Beyond Sports Commission. I feel that relationship is very much a give and take. Um, Jeff goes to the national tournament kind of it's kind of a bidding deal our staff Sean Finney goes with him as well so the two of them for the last three years go to that event every year and they have brought back different tournaments they brought back the flag football that came in and a couple other things that have happened what usually will entail such as um, Stroke Kennison he brings Kings of the Northwest which is a huge softball tournament they have always come to us we book the fields, we give them help, and then we turn them over to Jeff to help them if they're looking for additional help with lodging or a couple of the tournaments, the flag football, they needed, they paid for the Santa cans and they paid part of their field rent. So we get them here, we get them going and any type of assistance that Olympian Beyond can do, they do, they've offered to do for some of the uh, state tournaments, they've done some hospitality, they've, come in and you know we're like like i told you earlier with the hotels they've worked hotel deals they've got the connection with that that we don't have and so it's it's kind of a give and a take we get them in and then they help secure them by giving any of the additional assistance that they can whether it be hospitality whether it be <clears throat> paying for santa cans um, paying for some hotels all those different things that they have the additional funds for that we currently don't have that is pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, if there's any questions on either one of those, Julie and I are here to help answer them. Okay, uh, you can stop the screen share. And I'll try. <laughs> we have questions for Sue and Julie. Now, my comment, my only comment would be, I think this is exactly what Visitor and Convention Bureau funds are for because it does, they do bring heads and beds. They do bring <laughs> tourism to our city. And I feel like a 2% increase over five years is pretty minimal. So, you know, I don't see a problem with it. The only thing I would add is you know, when you told your five top sources of revenue, um, you didn't list any lodging tax. And I don't know if that's just me because we're kind of calling some other people out on it. I just thought I'd bring it to your attention. Yeah, I didn't put it in there because I didn't know if we were going to have it for this year. So it's it's okay. never been assumed. And that's how I looked at it. So in the future, if you'd like me to add that, I certainly will. Um, I just never assume it's going to happen. We had it taken away last year. Yeah, so that's true. Um, so you never know. I know. <clears throat> uh, I I <clears throat> I know you guys, you and VCB do um, a lot more intensive collaboration than um, also what I knew about. Uh, I, I, when it comes, yeah, I noticed that you you said that uh, some of your your costs have increased. And one thing that I'm not sure about, and this is not a question that's on there, but does the city charge you for water? Yes. You have, you get a city water bill just like the rest of us. Yeah, Julie, you want to ask address that? You're on mute. I know. I was trying to find the right button. Um, Yes, currently our budget per year is $82,000 for our irrigation. 
And it was just discovered this year that one of our meters, the one that feeds our um, softball fields, so a baseball field plus four fast pitch fields or softball fields, that meter has not been charged. So we're looking at actually increasing our budget line item on that by another ten thousand dollars. So, you know, do you know how long it's been out of charge? It looks like uh, since two thousand and. 14 or so. <laughs> yeah. hey, we've been getting a deal. <laughs> it, it showed up in our automatic meter reading, but for some reason it didn't get to the HTE. So I'm not exactly sure who's been paying for that. Um, I understand that we might have to, at least for the back past three years or so. Sure. Okay. So uh, I, and so as you guys bring them, VCB kind of helps fill in the gaps with you guys. And it's a, it's a real nice, healthy collaboration. You like working with those guys? Oh, I like, I definitely do. And, you know, I wear kind of two different hats because I'm also the um, vice chair on the executive committee for the VCB. What I enjoy with them is if we have some of the tournaments that are on the fence, we can go to them and say, how can you sweeten up the pot a little bit? Because we've extended everything that we can. How can you help us bring it in? And that's where Jeff comes in with, and it could be the bid fees. It could be paying for what in one of the football fields, one of the flag football tournaments, they actually paid the full field rental at the rack to assure that they came in for that first year. And subsequently they've been back two more years. So it was a really good concept because they got up here they loved it, and now they've continued to come back. Awesome. Chad, do you have anything? No, we're good. Well, thank you both for, for being here today. You're uh, welcome. We really appreciate it, and we, we really like the work that you're doing. I drive by the field all the time. Uh, there's never a dull moment out there, even when <laughs> it's winter and freezing cold. People seem to love to walk it. Um, they do. Yeah, really great facility, so thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much for having us. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, next on our agenda, uh, we are going to hear from Shannon Kelly Fong, uh, the assistant manager, uh, assistant city manager, in regards to the city of Lacey banners. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, right, will you be needing to share your screen today? I will be sharing my screen. Okay, uh, you will have, uh, keep your presentation to around five minutes. And then after that, we will have uh, another five minutes for questions. Perfect, I will okay. uh, start my presentation then. Thank you. Can you all see my screen? Uh-huh. Perfect. All right. Well, so just to start off, um, as I said in my packet, uh, first impressions really matter. Uh, studies have shown that first impressions are formed within the first seven to 20 seconds of an experience. So just looking at my clock right now, you've already established a first impression of me as well as this presentation. Um, some uh, studies, uh, for example, this Princeton University one has actually said that first impressions are established in the first tenth of one second. So when I first hopped on, you had that impression. So when visitors come into Lacey, they, they really have two options. One, they can develop a negative impression of the community, or two, they develop a positive impression of the community that encourages them to stop, explore, eat, experience, spend and stay here in the city and then also revisit. So one thing, you know, thinking about tourism and tourism marketing is how do you create that environment where it's very welcoming for visitors? Uh, in addition to just that very first impressions really mattering, there's also research that shows that consumers uh, say that they are more likely to trust recommendations. So word of mouth uh, from friends and families above any other type of advertisement. So this was from a Nielsen report here, and you can see um, on the teal box that recommendations from people they know scored 92%. Also, consumer opinions posted online scored incredibly high. So all of this is to say is that word of mouth marketing is very important 
and first impressions matter. So just briefly, I know you all know this, uh, the RCW, it says tourism, marketing, special events and festivals, and then the support of operation and capital expenditures of tourism related facilities. So how is this connected to banners? So the banner goals would be to foster a positive experience, again, showcasing that warm, welcoming and riveting environment that encourages uh, visitors to stay here in Lacey to come visit, to tell their friends about how awesome and amazing Lacey is. Uh, the ideas would be that these banners would be located near city entrances, activity centers, and tourist attractions, uh, such as, for example, the Rack. Um, to gain, you know, return visitors, people who really enjoyed their experience, had a great first impression of Lacey, liked everything that they did there, and then told their friends and family about their experience. Um, and these banners would place an emphasis on tourism marketing by helping create a brand for Lacey, something that when you enter the city, you immediately know, hey, I am in Lacey, Washington, and I want to go back to Lacey, Washington, and I want to tell my friends about Lacey, Washington. They'd also be able to highlight special events and festivals and showcase our tourism related facilities. So one thing that uh, this committee asked for was some examples of what these banners could look like. I know in the packet that I submitted, I provided um, some examples from other jurisdictions, other uh, tourist related industries. So we have mocked up a few examples and I just want to say that they are uh, general concept designs just to showcase what we think these banners could look like. Obviously, we'd want to go back and do some more due diligence and work on what they could look like, but it's just to give this committee a good sense of, of what they could be. So here are just a couple of examples that we have put together for you. So you can see starting from the left and then going to the right, uh, highlighting the regional athletic complex, um, all of the great things that you can do there, highlighting um, you know, some of the best attributes that are here at the city of Lacey, which are our amazing lakes and water sports and people coming here for, uh, you know, partaking in those amenities, highlighting um, you know, large regional parks that bring people in from very far away uh, to go take hikes um, and explore and experience the outdoors. A Couple more examples, um, we've got uh, going for, again from left to right, um, some banners uh, that are celebrating the amazing uh, events that we have here in Lacey, like the Lacey Spring Fun Fair, um, again, our parks that bring people in for large tournaments um, and then, uh, you know, events, special events that are held uh, throughout the city, such as Noon Tunes in Huntimer Park. Mm. So just to, to reiterate what the request was, so the request is for $10,000 and this would essentially be for around 65 banners um, and their hardware and then also a set aside uh, for some design work because again what I've just showed you today are general concepts and this is certainly something that we'd want to look into and refine as we're trying to get that great experience for visitors uh, when they come here to Lacey um, so that they come back again and that they tell their friends about their experiences in Lacey. So I'd be more than happy to answer any questions uh, that this committee may have on the banners. Awesome. Hey, Shannon, it was, it's Chad here. And I was the one that wanted to see the examples. So I really appreciate you doing that. I was just kind of curious how we were uh, branding certain events. So I was trying to figure out that. So that really helps me uh, uh, concrete that. So thank you so much for, for mocking those up. I saw the other ones in the packet about like, welcome to this place or welcome to that place. And I was just like, I'm not seeing how it's tying into Lacey. So yeah. I just wanted to say thank you for, thank you for taking the time to do that. So. Absolutely. The only comment I have is I've been to other cities that have banners and I feel as Shannon has um, talked about that it really it's welcoming and informing. So I think it would just be a real plus for us to have that in Lacey. And I think before we've had some banners, but not like these. Right, Scott, haven't we had banners before? I'm not sure if we've done that in the past, but clearly it's a, a promotional item that you can utilize. We've had banners on uh, on College Street. I know we've had banners on College Street back. Um, it's been Here's several years, though. Yeah. I just don't know if they were used with lodging tax dollars. Right, right. Oh, right. Oh, Councilman well, Miller, you're on mute. Uh, thank you. I, I've seen those those banners in uh, Anacortes, you know, the gateway to the San Juans, having been there recently. 
Um, I, I do have a question. I, I like the banner idea personally. Um, it it kind of breaks us out of smaller town into middle medium sized city kind of a feel, if you will. Uh, I are we able, and Scott, you may chime in on this. You know, we're, we're one of the top 75 cities to live in all the United States. Is that right? Right. Number we 75. Made, we're, we're number 75? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Out of 100 cities in the United States, we're number seven. Can in, in now do do we get to use that logo that in 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 some of our is, is there does that come with being on the list? It, so it it does not, but if we wanted to maybe talk to it's Money Magazine is one who gave us that recognition. I mean, that's sometimes you can contact them and ask if you could use that in some promotional item. We would just need permission for that. I'd like to see that if if at all possible. Uh, and and I think that you know if we're trying to make an impression uh, as they come in and as they leave, um, you know, seeing mm -hmm. some of the accolades that we've achieved as a city um, go, would, would go a long way in, in some of that impression making. I agree. And I tell everybody that'll listen to me. We're, we're number <laughs> 75. Yeah. Does anybody else have anything for Shannon? Okay, seeing none. Thank you so much for your presentation, Shannon. Well, thank you all for having me. You're Thank welcome. you. Okay, moving along in our agenda, it looks like the next uh, presenter will be with us for four different presentations. Uh, and uh, that is Blake Knobloch, from, who is the executive director of the Lacey South Sound Chamber. And so, um, Let's bring Blake in. And it looks like Blake that you are in and you are not on mute. So you can probably hear me and I can probably hear you. Is that correct? I can, I'm sorry. Here, let me get my video started for you guys. Uh, and I've got Terrell here next to me, our financial manager. So great right. to see everyone this afternoon. Thank you for having us in. Will you be sharing um, a, a presentation that you need to share your screen with or your, or no? Yes, we do. So let me, we'll move in. And before you do that, I just want to check that we have the same order, um, starting with Visitor Center, Golf Classic, South Sound Barbecue, Winter Fest, Sip, Saver, Shop. Is that yes, the order that's that you correct. Have? All right, so you guys can all see the screen now, the Visitor Center update. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, let's just go. And I think you guys should have all received these um, in your packet as well. So I'm just having some issues. So our target demographics for the Visitor Center um, water visitors, obviously, um, those are the folks that we are aiming to attract, uh, two businesses, uh, that we're promoting throughout Lacey and the South Sound region. Um, three are residents that we inform and then four are relocators. So folks that are moving into the area, um, that call in and are looking for relocation packages and, um, usually different buyer's guides and visitor's guides. And so those are really the folks that we're serving throughout the Lacey area. Um, top questions that we have uh, as a visitor center. One, do we have a map of Lacey? Um, do we provide relocation materials, uh, things to do while staying in Lacey? And so a great, um, great tool that we use for that is our Discover Lacey website, uh, as well as our social media. So we promote that through our Instagram, uh, through our Facebook and then through the Lacey Chamber site as well. Uh, often get asked about schools in the area, uh, activities to do while they're here, different restaurants to go to. Um, do we have a phone book? Comes up quite often. 
And then also, do we have any souvenirs? And we have launched uh, a souvenir line uh, this year as well. Uh, male to female, pretty much 50-50 uh, for folks that are coming in into the area. Um, so some of our 2020 accomplishments uh, that we did with last year's fund, uh, we designed a branding guide. Um, we handed out PPE and masks and sanitizer uh, during COVID. Uh, we provided community um, information about COVID and businesses that were open. Uh, we were actually the first one in the area to provide um, information about businesses that were providing curbside services here in Lacey and the South Sound area. Uh, we had, gosh, I think like 67,000 hits on our social media um, with that. So we've implemented some unique marketing campaigns uh, during COVID-19. And then we've worked a lot with Thurston Talk um, to let folks know uh, what businesses are open and what they're doing. And then we also started doing what we call member spotlights. So we've actually gone out and done video shoots. We've partnered with Partiman Productions um, and gone out to different members' businesses to show folks that uh, business in Lacey is open and thriving. Uh, and then we've created an apparel brand, an apparel brand also. Um, so you can see some of our top performing platforms. Um, our website, we currently get over 500 views every month. Uh, Instagram, we've got just shy of 1,200 followers. And then Facebook, we've got uh, right around 2,000 followers. Um, and that's, we've had, gosh, really, so 885 new followers since January of 2020 on Instagram, uh, 569 new followers in the year on Facebook, and then we've upped our viewership on our website uh, by 300 viewers every month on our Discover Lacey page and our Lacey South Sound Chamber page. So let's scroll down. This is just kind of some of the new apparel that we've got. Um, we have a website for that. So one of the things too, so a question that the the panel had was what makes us different than Experience Olympia and beyond? Um, and really the biggest thing is that we actually have a visitor center. So we offer folks a place to come in, gather information between Monday through Friday, nine to five, um, and get that in-service or in-person customer service um, that no one else is offering in Olympia, Lacey, or Tumwater. So that's something that, that really sets us apart. The other thing is we are focused entirely on Lacey and the South Sound area. Um, Experience Olympia and Beyond is all of Thurston County. And so a lot of their focus is on the Thur Thurston Bountiful Byway and downtown Olympia. Whereas we are focused on Lacey and Lacey businesses uh, and different experiences in Lacey. And that's why we've created the Discover Lacey uh, social media sites and uh, website as well. Um, so that's how I, I would say that's how we really, you know, define ourselves compared to the VCB. Uh, we've been operating the, the visitor center Monday through Friday, nine to five. Uh, Terrell and I have been here. The other exciting news is we are actually in uh, a new space. So we've just recently moved. Uh, we are over in South Sound Center, so we are in a much more visible location. We're right next door to Merle Norman Cosmetic Wigs and Day Spa, for those of you who know where that's at, just behind the, uh, the footwear store and over by Carl's Jr. So um, we've got a lot that we need to do with this space as far as signage goes and um, getting new photos and marketing materials. Um, so... And that's, that's what we would plan to use those, those LTAC dollars for. Does anybody other than myself have questions? Blake, Chad, uh, Blake, Chad here. Um, hey, hey, good to see you. You too. Uh, I wanted to ask the question about signage. Is there going to be, is there thoughts or given thought to signage 
out front uh, of the off the road by the Carl's Jr. side. Just curious. Yeah, so we will we are able to do like temporary signage there, like day signage, big frames. Uh, and that's one of the things that we are working on with fast signs and that we would use these funds for. Uh, and then we are also working with Grace over there to do a large light up sign uh, to show that this is the chamber of the visitor center. Awesome. Thank you. And then you, window sir. clings uh, on the front doors. Awesome. I have not seen your new location, but I will drive by on my way home tonight and take a look. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we're, uh, uh, we don't have any signage up yet. That's something that we're working on. And then, uh, of course, October 28th is going to be our big grand opening and ribbon cutting. So we'd love to have you all come to that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a question. So are you able to, how are you able to keep up the Discover Lacey site? So we, sorry, Ruth, how are we able to keep up the Discover Lacey site? What was that? Yeah, just, it just hasn't been updated lately and I mean, it I is, yeah. So we actually update that regularly, um, as well as the social media accounts. Those get updated uh, at least weekly with postings. Our uh, chamber sites get gets updated at least three times a week. So mm -hmm. we've contracted with Partiman Productions, and he's doing marketing for us uh, for the visitor center as well as the chamber. And he also has an office here at the chamber. Oh, uh, and also you didn't identify us as one of your top sources of revenue on your application. We did not, and we haven't in years past either. Um, and that's just because we're, we're not certain uh, if we're going to get the funds. And so uh, that's why we didn't do that. Hmm. Okay. It looks like your um, <clears throat> your numbers are up. Your social media numbers looking good on the rise, and uh, so you must be sharing a lot of content, keeping people, you know, coming back and signing up and so on and so forth. Um, do you share all the all the like the parks and rec content, or do you or it, the you know the events content for the city, or is it just we do. So we share all the different events that the city has going on. Um, we share about the different businesses in the city. We share about different tourism um, opportunities in the city. Um, we share posts from the police departments, from the fire departments, um, from the city of Lacey. So really all aspects and everything that, that is Lacey kind of go on to that, that Discover Lacey site. Content rich. So the, you're saying the Discover Lacey site, I was thinking more of the Instagram and the... Yeah, and so Corey with Partiman Productions, he will, um, he shares the different events and different stories and whatnot through the through the social media also. Just all through your all, all your platforms? Correct. Because you guys are on the rise. You guys maybe cracked 2,000 this year? Um, I hope so. That's definitely okay. the goal. Headed towards it. Yeah. So no, our social media has done really well since contracting with him. Um, website views have been up, and so yeah, just he's been uh, he's been a real asset. Awesome. Does anybody else have any other questions about uh, chamber or visitor center? All right, seeing none, uh, we will move on to the 2022 golf classic. All right, so. We haven't asked for LTAC funds uh, in the past for the Golf Classic, but Terrell and I were looking at our numbers. And so we had 144 players. Uh, we had 18 whole sponsors, um, as well as a number of um, number of other sponsors, you know, venue sponsor, driving range sponsor, putting green sponsor. Uh, but one of the things that we found very interesting is about 34% of our participants came from outside of the area. Um, a lot of them came from Pierce. We had 5% uh, of our participants come from King County. Uh, we had folks from Skagit County. We had uh, a player from Canada. We had folks from uh, Mason, Lewis. So really it was, it, it was kind of an eye opener to show us that 
um, this is bringing in visitors and tourists into the city. Um, our folks who brought teams in from King County actually had stayed overnight uh, at the Best Western there in Hawks Prairie um, that would, since they had an eight o'clock tea time. So that way they were refreshed and ready in the morning. Uh, they stopped and got breakfast before they came to the golf club. Um, we had folks from Pierce County that after they were done with the golf tournament, um, went out uh, to this, went out into the city of Lacey and continued and uh, did some did some more drinking and uh, went to went to restaurants and did dinner. So um, it was just really eye opening how many folks we do bring in from out of Lacey for that particular event. So I, have a, I mean, oh, go ahead. Oh, I have a question. So, do you have a committee that works on this? Because you used to. You always had a committee. Do you currently have a golf committee? And if so, I was looking at your expenses and that you had listed, and you've got quite a bit of eleven thousand five hundred dollars in staff expenses for the golf tournament. If I read that right. Like four thousand for dollars for your staffing, and then seventy five hundred dollars for an event coordinator. And if you got a committee, right, that does a lot of the work, I don't know. I'm just <clears throat> so part of the part of the staffing with the golf tournament is we did um, hire cash marketing to help put the event together, um, and then we also had some um, some overtime, and part of that thirty five hundred. Or excuse me, part of that 11,500 11, um, was traded in sponsorships with them. So um, we do have a golf committee. Mike Jones, who is the executive director for the North Thurston Education Foundation, uh, is our golf committee chair. Cameron Daniels with Edward Jones is on the committee. Becky Carver uh, with Prime Lending is on the committee. Uh, and then Jerry Wilkins. Uh, definitely helped out as well. He's been the, the past chair for a number of years. So uh, we do get a lot of help with that also, yeah. So, but that staff time includes, so part of that Ruth, staffing includes my salary and Terrell's salary as well. And the time that time and effort that we put into the golf tournament through the planning mm -hmm. and the meetings and the day of. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. It just mm -hmm. seemed like a lot of expense for staffing or the promote or the uh, your contractor. So it just it was. It seemed to be a lot of out of your budget. Gotcha. I can do a breakdown if we're in. And so, uh, the, how many how many years you guys have have you guys had this? This one? Oh gosh, they've been doing the golf tournament, I think, for 33 years. Okay. Yeah. And so it was originally a fundraiser for um Lacey Spring Fun Fair. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay. And so now we're up to 144 players, uh 18 holes, whole sponsors. Uh do holes get multiple sponsors or just one? So holes just have one sponsor. Uh, okay. but then we do have so I mean we've got you know a weather sponsor, we have a venue sponsor. Uh, we have a meal sponsor, we have a drink sponsor, we have a cart sponsor, um, we have a sand trap sponsor. So, so we're uh, pushing 200 people on this deal. Oh, in, with, in, with um, volunteers and then all the sponsors, we're close to 300. 300 people? That are in attendance, yeah. So it's a 300 person event, which is, I think that's more than... Uh, then the beer brats bands was that how many people came to that brats brews and bands that i'm not yeah. sure that's not our event oh sorry okay okay uh does anybody else have anything for for this this event okay seeing none uh we're gonna move on and next we have the south sound barbecue festival yeah excellent so Barbecue Fest is back on. It's happening uh, July 9th at Hunter Park. Uh, we actually just had a meeting today. We've been 
working with Justin from the city of Lacey. So things are going really well on that. We expect to have around 10,000 people um, in attendance again. Uh, we are going back to kind of our roots of the barbecue festival uh, and we're gonna do Backyard Joe's again. So we're really excited about that. That's something that we've had a lot of community demand for. Um, and so we're gonna get rid of the PBIA section and go back to Backyard Joe's with our community judges and uh, community folks that are able to come in and do barbecue. So that's pretty ex exciting. Um, it's, oh, let's see here. So we draw folks uh, really kind of from side, say seven different counties, um, Pacific, Lewis, Mason, Grays Harbor, uh, Pierce County, Thurston County, uh, and King County. And we do that through our advertising efforts. So we partner a lot with Thurston Talk. Uh, we partner with different papers in the South Sound region. Uh, and then through our radio advertising that we do with Mix 96 and 96.9 KO and 94.5 Roxy. So this is a large event that brings folks in uh, from all over, uh, not just attendees, but also vendors. Uh, come from multiple different counties as well. Uh, and then our Backyard Joes are um, coming primarily from Thurston County. They're staying overnight there at, at Hunter Park, but a lot of our vendors and guests are staying um, overnight. In fact, Candlewood Suites uh, in the past has offered uh, discounted room rates to festival goers and vendors. So we are looking at partnering with them again on that. Uh, we've been talking with Annie from Candlewood uh, to make that happen again. Uh, we've got a great kid zone that we're working on with different bounce houses. We've got a wonderful beer garden that'll be uh, hosted up at um, the hub with Chef Ricardo and his staff. Uh, looking at adding cider to uh, the beer or the beer garden as well. So just a lot of opportunities and uh, a great community event that we are very, very excited to, to bring back to Lacey this year. Does anyone have any questions about the South Sound barbecue event? Um, the, the, the first question on there was, please explain the need for an additional 2,000. Did we, did we get to address that? You know, and I'm not sure. In fact, I called Nicole um, and asked her about that. We were asking for the same uh, for this as we did in 2019. So I'm not certain where that came from. Okay. I think, I think uh, probably it's because you only turned in 18,000 to get reimbursed because okay. that's what we kind of have on our records that you that uh, we gave you 18, but I remember us okaying you for 20. Gotcha. So you are I don't, okay. That could be where it happened. Yeah, you're correct. That makes sense, Ruth. And this is the the event that we have at Huntermer with all the the street just lined with vendors. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's it's big party. Yeah. Yes, it is. It well. And are you, are you going to be having a band again this year? Uh, we'll have multiple bands. Multiple bands? Yeah, so John Grantham, um, I'm sorry, Patrick Davidson, uh, a mortgage broker here in town, is lining up all of our entertainment. And, um, we should have, I think, three different stages? Two stages. Two stages and multiple bands throughout the day. One for the general public and one in the beer garden. Well, we all know Patrick mm -hmm. to be a highly capable individual yeah okay uh does anybody have any further questions about the south sound barbecue festival at this time scott please go ahead i'll just point out there was an award in 2020 for 18,000. obviously that was taken away because the event was canceled so i think again there was a question mark from going from 18 to 20,000. oh but the submission was for 20 or was the submission for 18? The application says for 20. 
for 20. Okay, and there's an, an 18 award. Is that correct, Blake? It is for 20? Yes, that's correct. Okay, um, if nobody has any further questions about that event, uh, we'll move on to our last one, which is the Winterfest Sip Saver Shop. So this is one that we're really excited about. This is um, our fall fundraiser that's going to be replacing the auction. We thought since so many different organizations have an auction um, really around the fall that we would try something different. And rather than just getting chamber members involved, we would open it up to our entire community. So we're working with Madeline White. She's our chair of this event. Um, this is the first year that we're going to do it, but we think it's gonna be very successful. And it's a Winterfest Sip Saver Shop. So think of like a high-end holiday bazaar. We're doing this the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Uh, we are working with different distilleries and breweries and caterers and restaurants in the area. Um, and then we are also working with different craft artisans to come in um, and sell their wares. So it's a great opportunity, um, one, to get folks in from out of the area as shoppers. Uh, and we'll be partnering with the different radio stations again and Thurston Talk and different newspapers in the area uh, to help advertise this and bring folks in, as well as through our social media and our websites. Um, and so that'll help to one, not only get consumers in, but then the vendors. Uh, we, think, we think we'll draw kind of the same type of crowd um, or from the same areas as we do for barbecue festival uh, for vendors and consumers. It's gonna go from 11 to seven. Uh, we'll have holiday music playing. We've got, um, we're working with some high school jazz bands to get them lined up, but just a great opportunity for folks to come in, sample stuff from different distilleries, different wineries, find out you know, who the local caterers are and who they can work with uh, to plan their holiday parties and meals, and then also do some shopping um, and check some folks off their Christmas list. And we, this is just, like I said, a great way for us to bring the community together and not just chamber members for our fall fundraiser. All right. Can I make uh, your, app, your application says that you're in Lacey and you're not, you're holding this outside of Lacey. So I guess my question to you, Blake, is how does that bring tourism to Lacey? Well, so this first one is at the Olympia Hotel at Capitol Lake, you are correct. Uh, and we did that just because with COVID restrictions, uh, they were one of the few places that could accommodate this um, and go and, and, and work with CDC guidelines. Um, next year, we don't have an event space um, reserved yet. And so our goal is to move it into Lacey uh, for 2022. But for 2021, we are, we are in Olympia, but we are drawing from the South Sound area. So we are going to be bringing a lot of folks and businesses from Lacey. Uh, we have a number of members that uh, have businesses in Lacey that will be participating. So it's- it I understand that, but I don't see how it brings tourism to Lacey. Well, this funding is for next year. This funding is for 2022, not 2021. And so our goal is to move the venue uh, to a Lacey venue. Do you have any in mind? Um, we're hoping maybe for St. Martin's. We've uh, possibly uh, SPSTC on 6th Avenue there, um, maybe mm -hmm. Indian Summer. So we are talking with a few different places, but we don't have anything, uh, anything finalized yet. Gotcha. Keep us posted. Yes, definitely. Does anyone have, else have any further questions um, about this event? Okay, seeing none, uh, thank you for your time, Blake. Oh, thank uh, you, I appreciate it. And all you guys do, thank you very much. Okay. Look, Great to see y'all. Look Thanks. forward to seeing you out there.
All right, well, we will move on to the next item on our agenda, um, which would be our final recommendations. At this time, we're, we're not going to be producing any final, final recommendations, I don't think. And, and, and I say that to say this, um, you know, we can, we can, what I'd like to do, if it's okay with the committee, is uh, just schedule one more where we bring Troy in and we just revisit the numbers uh, and we can, you know, take a talk about, you know, how, at, at what funding levels do we want to be at? What, what do we want to see in our reserves? And then maybe we can work backwards from there uh, and, and then get into funding from, from that perspective, if you guys are all right with that. I am because I'm. I don't want to spend down our, all our reserves, and we, if if my math does me correct, we would get down to about a hundred. If we funded everybody at what they asked, it would get down to about a hundred and twenty thousand. I don't. Know, Troy can probably help me if my math is incorrect. But anyway, so I I would appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I'm with Ruth as well. Susanna? I agree. Yeah. Okay. Because I want to make sure that, you know, we establish a threshold and then um, work from there to these different funding options that we may have available to us. And so, the other, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You're good. The other thing I'd like to see is sometimes I feel we get out of balance with a one day and a two day event. And sometimes a one day event for X amount of hours gets 20,000. And then a two-day event gets ten thousand, and it just seems like we're kind of out of whack sometimes. Yeah. So, are you saying that one-day event are are one-day events more are sometimes becoming more costly than our more extended events? I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, but I just know that I mean twenty thousand dollars for the barbecue festival versus. Ten thousand dollars for one uh, another one day festival. It just kind of seems. I know it, they can't all be the same because people have different expenses, but it just seems kind of out of whack to me. Yeah, I understand. And sometimes it can be hard to quantify those results. We see yeah. what what we're being told, but then we you know we got to look at the real numbers as they play out. Right. In the community. And I know it's a difficult, that's difficult to do, but I kind of think we need to keep that in the forefront sometimes. Yeah, we definitely don't want, I know that this last season we, you know, we really got, uh, we, we wanted to help and we started funding things and we really got it all the way down to, to you know, and fortunately, you know, our, 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 our numbers uh, came in pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our revenues, revenues have been up. Yeah, uh, but we, you know, and and part of part of that, in my opinion, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but is you know more people working from home, meaning they're spending more of their disposable dollars in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're we're winning there, uh, uh, but you know, as we go back to work and so on and so forth. So yeah, I would love to have that meeting where we can have Troy or Scott just go over the numbers one last time, uh, and then we can make funding decisions based on that. I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that. Well, I'll, I'll leave you kind of some just numbers for the committee to end on. So two things we need to do. Um, I'll leave you the numbers, but then we need a date so we can meet again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all we've done is talk dates, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the total requests were over 630,000. Uh, Troy had presented, we're looking about just north of $400,000 for revenue in terms of projections for 2022. So there's your gap. And then as we talked about before, there's about a little more than $200,000 in reserve. So be mindful. So when we come back next time, we can talk about, to your point, um, Ruth, if you wanna leave, you know, what amount you wanna leave in reserves, then we can add whatever the excess to the actual revenue we think we're gonna get and then we can work backwards from there. If that works, it does. Do, or, do, we, do we have a, uh, before we move on to the next subject, do we have, um, or Nicole, can Nicole produce a one sheet Excel spreadsheet that has just all the, 
all the asks and the dollar amount, or if we can get that updated and sent out. I know uh, that'll be really helpful for me to take away until our next meeting and kind of go through my notes again and uh, really see where I can do, do do some due diligence. So that would that would definitely help me out. I don't know if it would help any of the other committee members out. We'd be glad to do it. Thank would, you. Yeah. Okay, well, then uh, it appears as though we have reached the end of our agenda and uh, we, yes, please, Scott. Except for the date. Except for the date, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know we've been kind of hovering around the four o'clock time frame, but if we look at the week of the 27th, um, can the committee meet around noon? I would assume we could probably do all of our business um, within an hour, if that is acceptable to the committee. Uh -huh. Can we say that one more time, Scott? I'm sorry. Yeah. So if uh, we're looking at the week of the 27th, and I'll just throw a date out there, we'd like to maybe meet at noon if that works for the committee. And so does the 29th of September work from noon to one? Works perfect. That does. And I think I'll probably get lunch delivered here, right? By Uber or something? Bring a lunch. <laughs> As if you want to reserve lunch? reserves. <laughs> uh, Susanna, does that work for you in terms of that date? Did you say the 29th? Correct. Okay, that's fine. Noon to one. And then Councilmember Miller? Yeah, uh, and just you know, be mindful. We are going to have to make funding decisions so that the balance, so that the budget can be submitted uh, and balanced by the end of September. And so okay. that literally gives okay. Troy and Scott two days um, after our meeting, two and a half, I guess. And so uh, be prepared to you know make decisions, and you know they're going to stick. All right, so we're doing it via, we're doing it remote, right? So we'll do it on the same platform and the 29th, Wednesday from 12 to 1. Correct. And maybe if, if Nicole could get uh, the, the updated spreadsheet out, um, which I think it's pretty much going to be the same as one that she gave us before, but uh, if she would be nice enough to, you know, either resend or update and resend, resend maybe by this weekend so we can go over it and really just kind of chew on it over the weekend and Head into the week with some some realistic numbers in mind, um, and then you know Troy or Scott will give us a financial presentation. We'll have to make some decisions and, and move on with it into next cool. year. Sounds great. Everybody, one accord. Good. Thank Excellent. you. Thanks, well, everyone. Okay. With thank that, you. and I will thank call this you. meeting adjourned. And thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Scott. Thank you.